should you watch Don't Toy With Me, Nagatoro? Does she go too far? In this video, we'll be talking about Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro. In this video, I will explain what's happening in the anime and answer the question, does she go too far? But even if you haven't watched the anime yet, go watch the anime. I won't spoil too much, so here is your only spoiler warning for the entire video. You've been warned. So if this is the kind of content you're looking for, you're in the right place. My name is Barry and this channel is all about anime what goes behind them. I make videos all about what's currently going on in the anime industry. So before we begin, make sure to hit the subscribe button and then leave me a comment below saying I subscribed. And I'll try my best to respond to as many people as I can under this video. Now back to the video. Ms. Nakatoro is my most anticipated anime in the spring. I've been waiting for this sadistic tan skinned lolly for months now. God, I hate it. I hate it here so much. I hate it. Every time a plane just comes by, I hate it. Now, if you have never seen this anime before, let me give you a summary. Don't Toe With Me, Nagatoro is a slice of life comedy romance anime made by Nanashi. This is a Japanese webcomic series written and illustrated by Nanashi. It was published between August 15, 2011 and December 25th, 2015 on Pixiv. Nanashi began their career by posting artwork on Pixiv. Nanashi posted the early versions of Nagatori's design and artwork on Pixiv. And the artwork quickly gained some popularity with fans and it was eventually picked up by Kodansha. Now that's the backstory of it. The story summary follows Nanato, which is senpai, who goes to a library trying to do his homework in a quiet place like he always does. When he sees the school's gairus, or the bad girls if you will, this of course being the nightmare of any non-social preteen. Nayato is shy and a non-confrontational boy, as he's nervously trying to do his homework while, you know, not trying to stand out in any way, he fumbles the bag. His bag. <laughs> I had to do it. Out drops all his papers of his manga that he's making, and one of the girls decides to pick it up. And they all start to read his manga and laugh at him. When they decide to leave alone, one girl stays, that being Nakatoro. Nakatoro is a first year in high school with a reputation for not being interested with the guys at the school. Not the type to just, you know, date someone off of looks, which of course makes her popular by default. Nakatoro starts out teasing him slowly, but very effectively and rudely. That being what fans most know about her. She doesn't stop until she breaks you. Like, I could feel the line that most animes, you know, would stop at her cruelness. But Nakatoro is going to be playing hopscotch over that line. However cruel this sounds, I couldn't stop laughing at some things, right? Evil, I know. At the beginning, she is absolutely ruthless and sadistic, which I guess answers the question on Google. Is Nakatoro sadistic? Yes, yes she is. Is Nakatoro a tsundere? Yeah, later on in the story she is, yeah. She's a blend of some people's two favorite things. So does she go too far? Yes and no. Now, this general type of bullying is really too much and I can understand people being very mad on Twitter, even though people are always mad and heavily opinionated on Twitter, but over the course of watching the anime, it really does die down and her entire approach, demeanor towards him is very much different than what the first interaction was or how she would treat other people in general. The thing is, she's normally a bit more reserved, and she really isn't going to be going out of her way to talk to new people, and to the guys that try and talk to her, she's a bit more cold and harsh. And usually when she dishes out, you know, her insults, or in this case, her honest assessment of people, they usually just leave. Like, you're not just going to just sit there and take this type of punishment. But Naito is a bit different. He stays, he endures it. I know you might not believe me, but she really doesn't want to hurt him with her teasing. Anyways, Naito doesn't have close friends. She's the only one he will actually talk to. Naito is used to not speaking to anyone. He's been closed off for a large portion of his life to people. And Nagatoro has no one she really likes to talk to that much. So both kids get a benefit out of this. From this, he opens up a bit more 
and is willing to hold a conversation with people. Like before, he didn't understand the basics of conversation, like keeping eye contact, forming a complete sentence. He used to just close his eyes, keep his head down, and not say anything and wait for people to leave. And to some extent, he still does that from time to time, right? And you'll notice that a lot of the way she teases him really does tone down across the series. Like at first, it seems like a very much personal attack on him to then later just be playful banter, just calling him a pervert like a lot of other comedy animes. Even though she instigates a lot of this interaction, it's all in the hopes of seeing that will he actually get mad? Will he actually get upset? Which he, I guess, kind of does do. He doesn't get mad, but he does say something back to her. As far as a character growth, she does a lot for Senpai, as much as people want to try and cancel Nakatori as a series. You also see her being a very protective of Senpai. Like in the chapter where he's introduced to her friends and they actually sit down for lunch and, you know, there's a normal thing for, you know, schools across any country. Just talking, they start to tease him. They start to, I guess nowadays call roast, but I feel like it's more personal than that. Her inner yandere just kicks in and, sh and she's trying to protect him at any cost. If you want to see that battle of demons, then don't worry, the episode is coming to the anime. As far as a story, it follows a lot more like how Love is War panel would go. It feels like an episodic kind of story structure. It indicates more of a jerky plot line and changes that, you know, you wouldn't see in a very consistent story. You want plots and characters to fit very seamlessly. When you create a story like this, you're making episodes rather than a full story. And for some, this isn't, you know, too much of a bad thing. Like you said, we're making episodes that fit into a season. And for a comedy setting like, you know, Love is War, that is a good thing. But if this was done in a more serious show like a Naruto, a Bleach, a My Hero, not just saying shonens in general, but shonens usually do follow this type of bigger hero's journey story. A show that has relatively high stakes in it where characters' lives, you know, are on the line and you are rooting for these characters to come out and prevail, to then only have a break for whatever reason, where the storyline is now just having them having a fun time at a carnival or just doing some random thing, that's what we know to call as fillers. But those fillers follow more of an episodic structure. Now, for a writer, this usually is not a compliment because that implies that there's no purpose in your story, which you don't want. And back in the day, that was very much true. But nowadays, that's not true anymore. In fact, you can find a lot of success doing more episodic work in comedies. Like, for example, Adventure Time, Regular Show, both use this type of story art for a long time to then switch it up when the climax of the show arrives, when a character shifts is needed. And I highlight these shows because in episodic structure, you can get two episodes worth of content in 30 minutes, which is very much the case in Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro. This episodic structure is usually looked down upon in North America, but it seems to have found a home with a lot more of the slice of life animes. I think in part because that's what people want to see from their slice of life animes. They don't need some big grand story arc. All they need is really the characters being themselves and just doing funny things at funny moments with other characters. And that's really all they need. And shows that follow more of this episodical structure can still find long-term success because they don't really have to change too much of their formula. But I don't wanna give the impression that it's like lazy writing because it very much can be very hard to do because you can lose interest in your characters and in your story in general. Still, what really brought me into this anime to start with was Nagatoro, mainly her eyes. Nagatoro's eyes pierce through every character's soul. This is the best buff they could have given her from manga to anime, keeping that <laughs> structure of like just eye animation. Like her being so animated in the show really does sell the show and it's going to have to. So is Please Don't Bully Me Nagatoro good? Yeah, I'd say so. As far as a score, I usually would say it's early to make one. But given the manga is out and has about two seasons worth of content in it, I think I have a good gauge on how good it is. For me, it's a three out of five. There's a good lane it fits into, but the role is very taxing on Nagatoro to carry the show. And that is a lot to ask for. That's even more than Uzaki-chan has to do. And the community somehow gave it a mediocre score. And I trust me, I don't agree with that. I know it has to do with like this whole stupidity of Twitter in general, 
and how they scored the show I, I don't even know how they got that i, I don't i don't know a, a lot of the things that twitter said about uzaka i just don't understand my, my brain can't gauge how they came to some of these conclusions Usually in general for Twitter, they don't look up things past in a tweet, you know, but whatever. At the peak of this show, I think it could be a 3.5 out of 5. Nagatoro is coming in at a great time. Sometimes I've talked about in other previous videos that it really does sometimes depend on what year you decide to launch your anime and what is your competition in that year. And as far as this year is concerned, Nagatoro is a top female protagonist right now. In spring, She's a, just a top protagonist. She could very much be the most popular protagonist of the spring. I don't think she will finish that way. I think she'll stay around though the top three, which is important for your scoring. Cause like I said, she's the main reason you watch the show. She's the main character doing things in the show. She has to be carrying the show for the show to do well. It's just that simple. So if she's not in the top three or in the top category of even the female you know, protagonist, then that's not a good showing for your show long term and if you're looking for similar animes that kind of remind you of Nagatoro I came with a couple like you know the obvious one is Uzaki-chan very much in a lot of ways similar they're getting the same backlash kind of things on Twitter even though it's for different reasons a lot of the actual episode structure is very similar to Uzaki-chan the whole big personality of the two female protagonists is very much similar to Uzaki-chan there's a lot of similarities between the two but that's just one of them the next one is 3D Girl 3D Girl is a more um I guess plot oriented um Uzaki-chan or Don't Talk Me Nagatoro um the characters are gonna have you know changes in them along the way I feel that with Nagatoro the characters aren't gonna really be changing all too much I mean, the biggest one to get a change will be Senpai in the end, but still, it's not that big of a change. But then again, when Nagatoro isn't focusing on adding and bringing in all these different new characters, like 3D Girl is trying to do and make you really care about them, you know, they can get away with doing so. They can get away with not having a big character shift or change because they don't have that many characters to bring into the story. And that's one of the reasons why I think 3D Girl fell flat in season two and why it didn't really get traction to begin with but that's another video magician senpai very similar in a way to nagatoro it's very similar to uzaki chan i think the problem with them is they really over sexualized the character to the point people just got really just tired of it and just bored with it and it was like i don't want to see this anymore and it had nothing to really go off of anymore it just really wasn't fun even though a lot of the characters are very similar it just fell flat and the last one being dragon maid it's it's around that range but dragon maid is probably the best one out of this list of similar animes so that would probably be the height of where nagatori could be at dragon maid and i couldn't really tell you what it needed to do to get to that point but if you steer clear of some of the pitfalls of these other previous pretty good animes nagatoro can be a top anime at a time where snafu is done bunny girl senpai is not around anymore ReZero is coming to their final end. And where's the, where's the last one I was thinking of? ReZero, Snafu. Oh, and Love is War is on a little bit of a hiatus. This is a really good time to sneak in there because if it came out during the time of those bigger romance comedy animes, it would definitely fall beside the waistline. Now, as far as a season two, it's hard for me to believe that this anime wouldn't get a season two in say a year and a half of time. I think they're just going to sell pretty well in Blu-rays in general. Crunchyroll streaming is always going to be high up for Nagatoro, I feel like. It's currently right now with 2 million there. But that's just my opinion. Where do you rate Nagatoro as an anime? A. Do you think it's going to be a 2 out of 5? B. Do you think it's going to be a 3 out of 5? Or C. Do you think it's going to be a 4 out of 5? Or if you're just really a big fan for Nagatoro, D. Do you rate it's going to be a 5 out of 5? Make sure to like the video and leave me a comment down below saying what you think about the anime. As well as don't forget to subscribe. About 10% of you guys actually do subscribe, so I don't know, be different and subscribe. But yeah, that's gonna be for the video. Thank you for watching.